They do. They look pretty gnarly. Look at Steven's like, characters standing there like, yes. Is it is it just me or is the <laughs> right one T-posing? <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> yeah, it's true, dude. That's hilarious. That's uh, true. It, it kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you see the name on the mob? Let's just blow that up real quick, okay? Look at that. It who sunders the land. 10 plus. That is an interesting... That is an interesting name, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, those are gorgeous, man. They really are. That's something else, man. In time, the Cinderborn would gather greeting one another and sharing in their tales who would join the party and share in the adventure in store. What quest did each future Pathfinder carry, and what road would be paved as they stood ready to move forward? Welcome to Ashes Pathfinders, your dedicated and trusted Ashes of Creation podcast. Join us as we share in the journey that reignites the embers and rekindles the flames in the hearts of those long left to cinder. I am your host, Phoenix, also known as Samora, and I am joined by my returning Pathfinders, as always, Daedalus. Welcome back. Thank you, sir. Good to be back. And Basil, buddy, how you doing? Greetings. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> like these guys know. <laughs> if I seem a little out of breath, that's because I am. I was literally, I had ran downstairs like, I gotta get water. Ran back upstairs, man. And today is going to be a short episode, friends, because... We got stuff and things on the agenda. I can't confirm or deny what that might have to do with, but it's a busy weekend. And as always, the show must go on. We haven't had a lot in, you know, in terms of like, you know, showcase information from the studio because they've been preparing for what's True. happening Friday to Monday, which is testing. So those people mm -hmm. who have access have been presumably testing. Who knows who they are? <laughs> they know. <laughs> they know who they are. <laughs> and they're definitely doing their... I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they're testing and doing their due diligence and enjoying their time in Vera. Um, hopefully, in the upcoming live stream, which is what, Tuesday? Hopefully, during that live stream, we will get to see uh, some goodies from the studio. Hopefully some visuals, some footage, you know, maybe some stuff and things. Speaking of stuff and things, today, Steven dropped on the uh, Ashes of Creation Twitter and actually showed a couple things. And we're going to show that here in just a bit because I grabbed the images. Y'all probably, if you're watching here live, you're like, what the hell happened to the show's awesome aesthetics for when we're watching? What happened to that awesome artwork that Sim had commissioned you know, that animated stuff and things. Well, friends, Sim's got a new rig and he's a little tore up from the floor up today. So I did not get <laughs> everything in place. I did not get everything in place in time for the show. And I apologize. So you're getting our most basic representation. But today's a short show because there's not nearly as much to discuss and kind of had to make it short because of life stuff anyway. But we're here. Dedicated, as always, with episode 105 that we're calling in due time. And before we get started, and before we dig in too far, I want to give a big shout out to the home of this podcast over at AshesHQ.com, the community curated website for Ashes of Creation. A shout out to all the Imperial Flames right here, like all of you in chat that are here live, who support this community, this channel, and the show. Um, whether you support us here on Twitch, YouTube, Patreon, doesn't matter. It's greatly appreciated. Never expected but it is greatly appreciated. I really appreciate you all keeping the flames of this community bolstered and burning bright week to week, friends. So, I caught my breath. Right? We don't have a call in today. We don't have a call in. We, uh, you know, uh, don't have any iTunes reviews. And if we have one that came in recently, sorry, I haven't checked. And I'm sorry, tore up from the floor, remember? So... As I'm looking over it, you can leave a message to our phone to play live on the show at 1539-664-6801. But either way, friends, we're going to dig into today's show. And I want to start by those images that I was talking about. 
Yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, yeah. They are tasty. Steven dropped these on the Twitter uh, several hours ago, I believe. Uh, and I yanked them off. And I'm going to put them. And I'm sorry. They're not as, you know, not as big of a format as usual. They're going to be right over next to my bald, beautiful head. There you go. We're going to let those just scroll. You know what? I'm not that important. We're going to just cover me for a while, right? <laughs> All right. Here we go. I'm not that important. I'll just be the voice in your head for a moment. Okay, we've got uh, images of the ancients there out in the world, apparently in Alpha 1 testing. Also, notice that the wasn't it Alpha Island before? It ain't just an island anymore, based on that image, is it? Uh, mm. I know, that is fantastic. That right there. <laughs> Oof, the details, man. Mm -hmm. They're just so good. It's beautiful. Looks great, man. UI's looking mm -hmm. good. The map that looks like a looks like we've got a like a sort of quest log off to the side of the map too. Mm -hmm. Steven dropped that these. Very true. Yeah, he stopped. He dropped these to show them off to people on Twitter today. It sounds like they have some stuff and things to show us. I mean, even in the background, you can see that's clearly the coastal node formation. So you can even see on the map where he's at. And it's up there in the northern area. So this stuff all came down the down the chain. So, you know, this is no breaking of any NDA stuff here, friends. This is quite literally showcased on the Twitter. Because remember, if you're doing this testing, unless you are given permission to share anything, you don't talk about it. Uh-huh. You don't share <laughs> nothing. <laughs> wow, that's not a very... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> Bunny thing to do? Or I don't even know, Look, man. man the, I have cousins, okay? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, yeah, man, we're just covering my face up there for a little bit, but check that out, man. We're going to go to the next one, though. So, there's quite a bit there to look at. And I'm hoping that we get a nice, you know, like little video kind of walkthrough of some of the terrain, perhaps up in the upcoming live stream. Obviously we're going to have a lot to talk about after the live streaming coming or live stream coming up. Um, it's going to be, a, it's not like, you know, end of the year, but it's, you know, they've got to kind of like pencil it in to a time frame that's going to work. Cause you know, people holidays, they have time with their families and stuff like that. Um, winter's here mm -hmm. friends. I don't know about y'all, but I got some snow this past week. It was cold as hell out there. Yeah. A bunch unexpected. I mean, the weather here is really nice. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah, it's actually pretty decent. It's not hot. <laughs> yeah, I haven't gotten snow in this area, but it is definitely cold. My mm. my thin, thin uh, pre-move blood is is freezing. It's little, you know, what's <laughs> up. Your pre-move pre uh, blood, that's funny. And I came from a warm state to a not so warm state in the winter times. <laughs> true. Let's talk about that next image. We've seen the ancients from the 24 hour live stream. But we never see them in 3D form with animations. Mm, no. <laughs> yeah, that mm -mm. looks awesome. Yeah. Awesome. And I'm just drooling over all those spells. It's just like I want, I want to play with the spells. I just want to click on them and see if I get something. <laughs> <laughs> but those ancients, man, look at them. Already mm -hmm. out in the world. That's pretty, uh, dude. They look pretty gnarly, man. They do. They look pretty gnarly. Look at Steven's like, characters standing there like, yes. Is it is it just me or is the <laughs> right one T-posing? <laughs> he kind of is. <laughs> yeah, it's true, dude. That's hilarious. That's uh, true. It, it kind of is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you see the name on the mob? Let's just blow that up real quick, okay? Look at that. It Who Sunders the Land. 10 plus. <laughs> that is an interesting, oh. that is an interesting name, isn't it? Mm hmm Yeah, those are gorgeous, man. They really are. That's something else, man. I, I think that's uh, Varen for I'm going to beat that ass. I'm going to beat <laughs> that ass, man. Ain't that the truth? Ain't that the truth, man? Uh, I'm telling what's you. What's it called? If it, like, 
if you look at both of them, actually, you can see a little bit of a design difference in the wings and yeah. the horn. Yep. Mm -hmm. I do see that. And the center and the center cores. Yeah, that one on the left, like I mean, is that like a it looks like that's got a staff in its right hand or something, right? Yeah. Jeez, dude. I, I didn't mean, expect them to be that color either, man. It's like true. a pink purple or something. I kind of expected that orange kind of red color that we'd seen. Yeah. And and like if you look at the horns, like the one on the left has its horns upwards while yeah. the one has it on the sides. Yeah. They yeah, talked man. about the different uh, you know, kind of sort of like classes or, you know, the the kind of uh hierarchical structure for the ancients too, so Yeah. I love I love the glow effects in the chest. That's Yeah. Kind of makes you wonder, right? Like, how's all? What's what's that all about? You know, is that like, mm -hmm. you know, is that corruption, like their? Maybe? Okay. Yeah, is it corruption? Is it them imbued with, uh, you know, like, essence. or is it essence? Essence, yeah. yeah. Is, it, is it the is it the essence <laughs> that they're? Is it kind of something to do with how they're attuned to the essence? Mm -hmm. That's what I wonder because I'm wondering if the different color also, you know, kind of elaborates on that because the one that we saw on the 24 hour live stream was very clearly like an orange sort of mm. you know an amber sort of orange red uh color tone mm -hmm. which is you know we've we've seen more specifically that color we even saw it on the old troll model which was the uh you know the troll that was kind of corrupted had that had that color like on its arm and on one part of right. its body the half of its body right so mm -hmm. yeah man um it it is curious, man. I do I do wonder because Stephen they've talked about the the tunement sort of like ones uh, tie into the essence and and how well they are like sort of attuned and in it in use of of the essence and you know kind of talked about you know that the the gods for example they're essentially you know perfectly you know in tuned in their use with the essence and so kind of where do where do the ancients fall on that? you know, sort of, uh, sort of like gauge, if you will, of attunement or, um, ability to, to kind of use the essence and manipulate it. Uh, cause you know, the essence is neutral. So yeah, that's it. The essence is the essence, right? And, and it's only how, how, how one uses the essence that makes it ne necessarily like good or bad or, you know, good or evil or dark or light or however you want to conceptualize that. So we've got, you know, coming up here on the agenda today, there are some questions. Now, I'm just going to let us kind of jump on in. This is going to be a much more from the hip show today, um, mainly because, well, we don't really have a whole lot outlined. There wasn't too, too much. You know, in due time, we're going to get to a place where, where we have a lot more to relate back to the alpha testing that's happening. Uh, there won't be NDAs on things like that, and we'll be in a place where we're able to more openly talk about some of those things for those of us who either test it or just being able to share a stream, showcase it in some format and, and kind of as a greater community, like talk about that information that's being shared by different people. Um, the stories that are on, you know, unfolding, uh, the, the gear, the, the bosses, all those things. Um, so I'm really curious what we're going to see in the live stream. Um, with that being shown today, I do wonder if maybe we'll get to see like, you know, fighting the ancients. Cause we just got that little snapshot. I could totally, you know, see Steven having been running around in there and, you know, beating that ass, man, taking them, taking them ancients out. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully without GM hacks, but that's just me. <laughs> 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 Look, I might log into the game and not be able to loot anything one day. I've got to get my punches in where I can, right? That's true. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't true. I'm just just real talk here, man. I don't know what to tell you, dude. <laughs> like, oh, but but Sim, aren't you just like ex ex extending the period of him whooping the West and not not loading <laughs> at this point? <laughs> You're probably right about that. That's probably a very fair point. <laughs> Yeah, probably a fair <laughs> point. It's fine. It's okay. I've already, I've already accepted my fate. All right. I've accepted my fate. <laughs> I'm just going to have to find a way to make money in the game without ever actually being able to have 
anything I loot? Hmm. That's going to be an interesting challenge. I don't think that'll happen. Not fun yeah, and, and how to avoid that giant sandal from coming out of the sky <laughs> and just... Smashing me? <laughs> yep. Crunch. What was that? Those were bones, I think. And flesh of some sort. Was that a person? No, that's just Sim. That's badass. <laughs> So, gentlemen, like people set their watch to it and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm like looking over the questions. There were a pretty good number of questions, so we're going to reflect today on some of the questions, your questions that have been dropped on the forum. Because you got to remember, you can always drop your questions on the forums to the team. Holy shit, we just got a massive. Oh my! Oh my! Okay, going to call this out. I'm going to thank Monster for the resub and big shout out to Dread Katak who just dropped a ridiculous 25 tier one subs to us right here on the show. Much love to Katak, wow. man. He's been crazy. Oh, and artillery with bits. Thanks, buddy. 300. No. Yeah. Thanks a lot, man. You guys are amazing. They, have, they are so supportive, oh. man. Really. <laughs> Do appreciate that very, very much, man. They, I, I really do, man. As I'm winding down towards the end of this year, I'm going to be honest, man. I am very thankful. I've got a community that backs me up and supports me like this and helps keep things going because, quite frankly, it, it allows me to have a little more time to like dedicate this stuff than I would normally if I just worked my day gig all the time with more hours. So it's really awesome and it's greatly appreciated. And I'm coming up to the end of my year, which means I'm not going to be streaming every single day. I have other plans, but they're they're good plans. They're good things, friends. Good yeah, things. Yeah. Let's see. Were there any specific questions as you all might have reviewed the Q&A submission thread on the forums that you thought stood out to you the most? Hmm. Well, there was there was a few for me and one isn't necessarily a new question, but it made me think once again about the combat and uh, walls on the forum. Mm -hmm. um, his question was, or her question, not sure. Um, but uh, what direction do you see the combat going in terms of pace and skill complexity? Are you looking for more slow and thinking combat or fast pace that works with action and reaction, fast reaction? So personally, mm. I'm hoping they do a balance of something like, say, a BDO, which is like seizure inducing fast to something that's maybe more slower paced, mm. like, uh, you know, maybe, I don't know, the old Republic. Um, Ooh. I would say that's kind of the spectrum for me. I would like to see something where time to kill is decent, right? It's not like, you know, you could potentially one shot somebody with a few skills uh i would like to see something that has weight and i think they've talked about that concept before so i'm hoping they answer this question with kind of those type of parameters to say mm -hmm. they want to get somewhere in the middle where it's not you know too i would say um too jarring in terms of pace but not so slow that you're like Oh, just swing that sword or do whatever. I, I really would like to see something with weight and and something that puts a little more thought and skill in terms of just wildly just, you know, mashing buttons. So that was one that stood out for me. Nice. What about you, Faisal? Anything that stood out for you? Um, I actually I had the same thoughts of J Jalon, where when he asked when you destroy a caravan, you have to take the redemption certificate back to the point of origin. Mm -hmm. However, how can you redeem these certificates? If you are a war target for a node war, won't the guards kill you on site? Would they, though, Thank right? You. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's the question, man. You can only speculate until they give us something, you know, finite, I suppose, like something, something written on a tablet of stone, perhaps <laughs> reference there. <laughs> the word of law. So here's one that, that I thought was uh, interesting. 
which was, well, augmentations. This was from Shadowvin. Okay, I got that one too. Yeah, this one I this one I was this one I felt like, you know, was a good one to kind of discuss. Well, augmentations have the same effect across all tiers of a singular ability, or will each ability tier rank one, two, three, etc., be affected differently? Huh. So I'm hoping for the latter. Mm-hmm. Because that's Same. what's going to make, in my mind, theory crafting just way more fun. If it's just something general to the ability, um, then I don't know. Like, you know, because when you look at when we previously have looked at those, those, um, the tiers, right? I mean, this is something I did recently. Uh, I'd say in the past several months, I went mm-hmm. and we looked at when right around the time Ash was get, going viral, we kind of did this um, live piece where here in our community, we would, uh, we would basically go live and we would go, okay, we're going to talk about like the Ranger today. We're going to go look at all the skills that were outlined in alpha zero. I mean, obviously these are subject to change. It was alpha zero, right? We don't know if we're going to see these skills again, right? But the conversation was around, here's what we've got. Here's what we've seen. Here's what we know so far, knowing that it could all change looking at the different ranks and the different ranks had some pretty specific variations to them. So, I mean, if you add something to just the base skill itself, I don't feel that's going to be interesting enough when you look at how the second and third ranks change that skill, because I mean, we can just add like a general modifier to the skill as a whole. That's kind of boring in my mind. That's just my opinion. It's boring, right? There's, there's plenty of games that, you know, they don't really have like, I mean, even World of Warcraft has better modifiers and something like that. So that's why I feel like, yeah, true. right. Yeah, and, and it's and it's bottlenecked into in terms of theory crafting. You're very set in what your choices are for the most part. Hmm. So when you look at that, I'm going, I mean, when you got 64 class combinations, I just feel like you got to have the ranks be interesting. And with augmentation, when we already know that something generally like a teleport, no, a charge with like the fighter, which is the example Steven's given specifically, you know, if you have a charge on a fighter and you have the blink on a mage, and if you augment the fighter's charge with the the mage, then maybe you get some sort of a a blink of damage at the end sort of a thing um, where, you know, you have like, uh, you know, congruent pieces to both of the abilities, but kind of molded into one. Well, then the question for me would be that that would be an example of an augmentation working just on the singular ability. What gives theory crafting so much more flavor is if you then go to the tier two and tier three and have like an additional modifier to specific elements of that. Yeah, it does mean that you're going to be busy managing, you know, in terms of game development, having to balance that but that's also the developers end game is to balance the skills and the class changes and i mean that never ends so Mm -hmm. i don't know true yeah i think it'd be interesting with that like with the rank two or three you might be able to add like a stun or damage over time or something like that Mm -hmm. because kind of speaking of wow i mean i you know have been like leveling some alts and and everything in uh in shadowlands that i've noticed as I've leveled up, there are rank twos, and the rank twos never really seemed that interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe it's like a little more damage, or it's there's nothing really, or or shorter duration in terms of cooldown. Those are like okay, nice to have, but they're not interesting. So I do hope there's some creativity behind the rank ups, um, mm-hmm. and I really like that question just for that very fact that it opens up a little theory crafting. Uh, you know, for everyone to say, hmm, yeah, that would be interesting to be able to, you know, change again as ranks go up. You've got other things that potentially might be a good reward for ranking up a skill with a, you know, a, a tier two augment or mm-hmm. or going, you know, you know, ranking that skill up, base skill up as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Any other thoughts on the augmentation question? I always love augmentation questions because theory crafting, baby. Mm-hmm. Okay, here, here's here's a thought: make all those stats into zero, so when people fight, they don't kill each other; they do zero damage. 
And the fight lasts for ages. Yeah, it never <laughs> ends. <laughs> the eternal struggle within becomes an outward struggle between us. Whoa. I can just <laughs> imagine. Two British paladins walk into a bar. <laughs> <laughs> the end. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Man, dude. So, you have any, did you all put, post any other questions? Any other ones that stood out for you? Uh, there was one that I liked um, around, uh, I think it was Guild Wars or Guild Alliances. Both, actually. Xylus posted, you know, will Guild slash Alliances have an option to have permanent or long-lasting wars with other Guilds Alliances? Or will the Guild War system only allow for short-duration conflict? I'm actually kind of maybe going to change that question a bit. Mm-hmm. I kind of want to look at both sides of the spectrum, both the war piece and the alliance piece. Yeah. I think from a community standpoint and from, you know, protagonist antagonist, I would like to see long lasting things be a possibility. I mean, we know over time alliances are going to be broken. They're going to be formed. The same thing with wars. Wars are going to happen. Yeah. Peace or accords are going to happen. I just wouldn't like the game to determine um, how long those relationships or ant- antagonistic relationships last. Mm. So, yeah, I think that that mm-hmm. was a, a nice question I liked. I like that. You know... The, the guild mechanics and the guild warring mechanics and things like that. Those are some things that I'm hoping to see. We get a little more test around early. Um, I'd like to see more around like the declarations and, and how that all unfolds specifically. I'm also kind of wondering around that too, because, um, and I know we're, we're, we're getting close to our time here because today's a shorter show, everybody. But one thing I'm curious about is, you know, previously how we had this, uh, uh, point around how Stephen was talking about how the declarations of war would have to be crafted. There was a point in time where someone, I, I don't have it on tap, but I know that the reference point was that maybe that's not going to be the case anymore. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, man, have you all, heard, I don't know if there's any clarification on where that specifically stands now. I haven't heard. Yeah. I'm I'm hoping that the, we don't move away from it being crafted. I actually, feel like that provides a really important opportunity for people that maybe are in, you know, there's a lot of people that join guilds and stuff. And like, maybe you're joining a semi hardcore guild or a casual guild and maybe your casual guild has uh, competitive people and maybe they've got, you know, enemies out there and there are wars. And as a result of that declaration, I think it's really great to have, I mean, when crafting is crafting and commerce, these are some of the main pillars of the game that from my perspective, you know, it's important in my mind that crafters have that opportunity to be really useful and they may not do PVP and may not do in game rating, but Hey, you know what? They can help their guild by crafting and helping to contribute in these ways. Um, And those are some of the ways that I find in, in um, MMORPGs that often we, we see the MMORPG as a whole kind of suffer from a lack of that, integration of the different layers and the different layers here being crafting, you know, trade, you know, caravan routes, like naval mm-hmm. stuff, like all of these different things, like the under realm, the overworld, um, the nodes, like all these main pillars of the game and these, you know, sub pillars, even if you will, that tie into the main pillars. Yeah. Like crafting. Cause I mean, I think about ESO, right. And in that game, like you can kind of do everything. Well, in Ashes, you can't do everything. You can do it all, sure, but you can't master it all. You master one specific track, and that specializes you in your trade and your craft. And um, you know, when you look at the Elder Scrolls Online, well, you can do everything. The problem is, is that everybody can do everything. Everybody can get all the traits unlocked. Everybody can craft all the gear. Um, Finding a nine trait crafter, I mean, hell, you could even buy your way up to unlock and all that instead of having to wait and do your time to unlock those things like most people did in the early part of the game. Then on top of that, you get motifs in the cash shop and things like that. And so now you're taking away from the in-game opportunity for people to farm these things and have a marketplace around 
these things. Now maybe their value gets impacted and the overall economy of the world changes and, and not in my mind for the better. So, you know, some of these things relating to player agency and how as players who are crafters or harvesters or whatever, we, we all have a place is something very important. So that's something I'm very curious about too, but I know we've got a couple minutes left here. I guess one thing I want to check in on before we kind of wind this one down is gentlemen, what are you hoping we see with the fact that they are doing testing now? We saw a couple of snapshots from Steven. What are we hoping we see Tuesday? What would really bolster the flames of the community, do you think? Footage. Lots of footage. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just different environments, different mobs. I mean, I would like to see some encounters. Uh Anything yeah. where we can see maybe even different points of view between, you know, Steven playing his mage and, you know, Maggie and or, you know, Toast playing cleric and or tank, you know, whoever. Just being able to kind of see the different perspectives. I think that's not something they've really done. I mean, I think they've always kind of had it like from a first, like, you know, single person. But being able to kind of see that dynamic would be good. Um uh, because I, I, I think there's a lot to share. I mean, they a lot of what they're, um, they've already shared kind of in still, they can definitely take an opportunity to share in video and be able to really kind of see the level of detail and breadth. Because the screenshots are awesome, but they don't do some of those visuals yeah. justice. Right. And I think that mm. would really go a long way to hype the community. But as much content as they can jam pack into that, um, just to hype people up, I think would be good. Yeah. What about you, Basil? Siege mode, siege mode all the way. I want to see ballistics, <laughs> fucking cannons firing, fucking trebuchets, and I want to see all that shit. <laughs> all the stuff and things related to sieges and yeah, the yep. big stuff. Yeah, that'd be great, man. Yes. <laughs> that was that was like one of the places we were at too prior to APOC coming to an end. We were actually waiting to see that. And that's I think for some people still something that's on the table, like an area that they're hoping to see more around. But you know, we did shift, you know, the studio did shift their development to kind of focus on the uh, MMORPG. And so I think integrating that in sometime soon is gonna be great. Now, if you all want to submit your questions, they have to be submitted by uh, please hold. Let me make sure I give you all the right answer here, friends. Uh, ends December 21st at 11 a.m. So you essentially, if you're here live right now, tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. PDT, and that is uh, the 21st of December, okay? So, and then you have the live stream on December 22nd at 11 a.m. also. So friends, that's our show for today. It's a short one. But it was great to catch up with everybody, right? We are committed to being here like clockwork. Even if things don't go exactly according to plan, I'll have all the stuff and things you're used to seeing for the show ready by next time. My new PC is kicking ass, so that's great. Basil, Daedalus, we'll start with Daedalus. Why don't you let everybody know your domain, where they can find you? Right. You can find me on Twitter at The Ashen Herald and on YouTube, youtube.com slash C slash The Ashen Herald. Right on. And Basil. You guys can find me on Twitter as Vago108 and on Twitch as Faisal108. Awesome. And friends, remember you can follow this show on Twitter, Ashes Pathfinder on Twitter. So it's at Ashes Pathfinder. You can leave us a mail in the mailbag over at ashespathfinders at gmail.com. And you can call on the show at 1-539-664-6801. That's our show today, friends. We're going to catch you next week on sunday to follow up on the live stream that's coming up and i hope you all have a great holiday coming up if you don't get to make it for the show and remember show us some love give us a five-star review that's our show have a great night everybody we will see you next week sunday 5 p.m cdt till next time stay cozy (laughs) see you soon happy holidays everyone everyone